Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a cardboard box that I spent over a thousand pounds sterling on. About one thousand three hundred pounds, which is about the same in dollars, and it is a ridiculously expensive box. And I want to talk to you about how I'm not really sure how I feel about it, <laughs> to be honest. And I want to talk about why and what's inside the box, and a bit more. Now, you might already be aware, but this is the Herman Miller X Logitech gaming chair, and one of the nice highlights lights is that you open the box up and then you just roll the seat out and you get to sit on it you don't have to do any building that's one highlight the downside is i couldn't even get it through the door to my office so i actually had to unbox it in the hallway slash landing which was a mess and an awkward situation which left me frustrated and annoyed after i just spent a load of money and then lugged it up the stairs obviously this video is not sponsored by herman miller or logitech i purchased this myself they didn't send me a sample, I'm not sending it back, and so I'm able to give you my fully honest opinion on what it's like. And that opinion is very mixed, and I'm unsure of the end result. I'll be honest as we start out, and I'll tell you why. And one of the caveats to this is I have quite a curved spine, so I find it very difficult to get comfortable. There's a curve in my spine, which you'll notice when you see the clips, and I apologize for the mess in my office. It's just utter chaos in my life, and I try to avoid letting everybody see it, but there's just constant boxes coming in and out and a regular mishmash of stuff. But I wanted to purchase this chair for a number of different reasons. I have a slight arch in my spine, which makes it very difficult to get comfortable. I also spend a lot of time sitting. I basically do video early in the morning from like 7 a.m. until I start work at 9, and then I'm working from 9 till 5.30, sitting in the same position, and then again I'm editing video into the night or I'm gaming. So I spend a lot of time sitting, and I end up with backache. Now, I'm an old man by now, if you can't tell from the grey in my beard, so I suffer from back problems anyway. I also exercise regularly and hurt myself on a regular basis and so back pain is a regular problem now i've been testing out various different gaming chairs over the last few years secret lab and noble chairs i've tested out a couple of each maybe more and also corsair's gaming chair and i found them comfortable but after a number of hours i basically end up with a sore spine and i've never really been sure whether it's just because of my weird back or old age or whatever else so I decided to go insane and spend a stupid amount of money on a chair and I wasn't too sure about what it was going to be like and I was worried that I'd be thoroughly disappointed when I got out of the box and sat in it and that maybe I shouldn't have done that and I should have just stuck with the secret lab or noble chair setups that I had but I wanted to see what it was like. I mean, if you've got a chair that costs this amount of money, it must be amazing, right? Well, as you can see, it's adjustable in a number of different ways, as you'd expect. The arms go up and down, they go in and out, it tilts back and forth. You can adjust the base and other things. But one of the things that struck me immediately, and I think the best way of putting it was actually described to me by somebody else, and that is essentially that usually if you have a chair it supports your back by forcing you into a certain position. So you have a very stiff back and they assume that you're gonna sit in a certain posture and that is the way you will sit and you will like it. And I think that's a good valid opinion and a good summary of most gaming chairs and most office chairs. They have a very sturdy back to them and that's the sort of posture that you'll sit in. The thing about this Herman Miller chair is it's quite different. As you'll notice, there are a number of different support points across the entirety of the back and I'll show you some close up shots of that in a second. But what it feels like when you sit on it is a very different experience. Instead of forcing your back into a certain position, what it does is it actually molds into the shape of your back and it supports the shape of your spine as it is as you naturally sit, which I've found a lot more comfortable over a longer period of time, which is very pleasant. Now, don't get me wrong, it does take some adjusting. It does take some getting used to. You can see that you can tweak the base, you can pull it out, you can adjust the arms, you can move the chair up and down. And one of the highlights is almost certainly the fact that you can put it low enough that you can stick it under the desk, which I've not been able to do for ages with other chairs 
those that I've tested out. But what you'll see is this quite an interesting setup in the sort of setup of the rear of the back of the chair, of the way it sits naturally, but also just when you sit into it. Now, I was immediately struck by that when I sat down in it, and I wanted to test it out with a friend who's been very cynical about Herman Miller chairs for a while, and he thinks they're a massive ripoff. And I got him over to my house, and I got him to sit in it, and his face immediately spoke volumes as to the quality of the thing. Because you sit in it and you are struck by the comfort. And that was the same thing that I had when I first got it out of the box and sat in it first. Not only the joy of not having to install anything because it just literally rolls out of the box like this, but also just sitting in it, the way it just molds into your posture. So the way your spine sits is the way it supports you. And that is remarkably comfortable. Now there are some quirks to it. It has an adjustment in sort of the way it leans back and it doesn't sort of lock into a position. It feels like it's constantly pushing you forward and you have to fully lean into it. So I found that having a footrest is really helpful for this. It makes it easier for you to lean back into it and adjust and sit in that position with a bit more ease. And that is one of the quirks I find because with other chairs that I've tried, you can sort of lock them into a set position and you can just lean into it. This one you sort of have to force to stay in that position, but you can adjust sort of the tension of the back. So you can see the adjustment wheel here that adjusts some of the tension on the back, whether loosening it up or tightening it up, but it's still not a rigid support. It's not constantly pressurizing your back into a certain position. You'll see, for example, there's no lumbar cushions. There's no head pillow. There's not even any head restraint, so you're not putting your head back on anything either. And the result of this has actually been a very comfortable experience. Now, I still do get back pain, but I actually don't think it's related. I threw my back out last night just from being asleep, which was ridiculous. And that's just being an old man, I think. I woke up with back pain and it was nothing to do with the chair. But what I find is when I sink into this thing... I can actually sit in it for a lot longer than any other chair that I've tried. And I don't think that is a negative thing against Secret Labs or Noble Chairs or any of the chairs. It's just the nature of my spine. So I think if you have an awkward back and find it annoying, then maybe this chair is worth springing out for. However, it is a ridiculous amount of money. It's an extortion amount of money, but it does come with a 12-year warranty. So I suppose that is going to be beneficial over time. That's a bit of peace of mind. Now, I do have a bit of expendable income that I managed to spend on this. I've treated myself. It is a massive expense. Technically, I could have bought another graphics card for this amount of money or some sort of other insane thing, like maybe another camera for my setup. But what I wanted to do is basically purchase something that I could talk about in a bit of depth and say whether it's actually worth it, but also just to support my back throughout the multiple hours of seated nonsense that I have to do during the day in order to bring you the video content that you enjoy. So if you've found this video useful, smash that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments what you think. And the conclusion is I don't have post-purchase regret with this one, but I'm also not so overwhelmingly positive about it that I can just positively say that you should 100% go out and spend over a thousand pounds sterling or dollars on a gaming chair. It doesn't have any RGB lighting in it. Why is it even teamed up with Logitech? It doesn't give you any more FPS or anything crazy like that. And so the conclusion is I really don't know, but I do like it. I don't regret it. And so that in itself says something, doesn't it? This has been The Provoke Prawn. Thanks very much for watching. Have the best of lives. This has been The Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.